Welcome to the very first edition of Read It For Me. You're probably listening to this or watching this because you're a friend of mine, either online or in the real world. And I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to check in. I know how busy you are and I know how hectic things can be this season and I really appreciate your time. Before I launch into the show for this week, I want to ask you a couple of things. First, I really want to make this valuable for you. And rather than just guessing at what you might find valuable, I want to get your feedback before I set anything in stone. So what I'd like you to do, if you're so inclined, is to leave me a comment at the end of the show on the blog, or you can email me at steve at polarunlimited.com and answer these two questions. One, on a scale of 1 to 10, how likely is it that you'll refer this show to a friend or a colleague? And if not a 10, what can I add or take away from the show that would get me a 10? I'm not sure if you picked up on it or not, but I really, really want a 10. Some of you will recognize that as the Net Promoter Score concept, which is something I'm very passionate about, and it's actually one of the books I'll be reviewing in the coming weeks. The concept here is that if you like this enough to tell your friends about it, you're obviously going to see some value in it, and then I'm doing my job. I guess I should also give you a sense of why I'm doing this in the first place. Now, I'm doing it in response to many conversations I've had with business executives over the past few years where they've told me that they just don't have enough time to keep up with the latest books and ideas, but man, if they really could add an extra hour at the end of the day, that's what they would do. So my hope here is that you'll be able to carve out 10 minutes in your week, whether it's listening to this in your iPod, on your commute, or watching the slideshow after you've tucked the kids in bed at night, to learn something new that will spark some creative thinking in your business. One of the things we're going to be talking about today is transparency. So, in the spirit of transparency, here's what's in it for me. I'm really hoping that every single part of this show is going to be interactive and it's not going to be a one-way street. I want to continue the conversation about how I'm using these ideas, how you're using these ideas, and even take reading requests if you want to take advantage of a guy who's willing to work for the next year and a half or two years to get this off the ground. So for you, a weekly show that will hopefully inject some color and some passion into some ideas that you otherwise might not have found. And for me and for you, the ability to connect with other people who are passionate about making their businesses succeed and who want to use creativity and innovation as tools to make that happen. So sorry for the long rambling introduction. With all that being said, let's get the show started. This week we're going to take a look at Jack Walsh's winning. This entire book is about, pardon my French, getting done. And with things the way they are these days, there probably isn't a better time to be focusing on getting done. Now, some people will say that Jack Welch is a relic from the 1980s, and the world has made his leadership style irrelevant. And, you know, in some ways that might be true. I've read this book twice now, though. First when it came out, and just this past week. And i got to say that, much of his advice couldn't be more appropriate or more timely for the times right now. As we all bunker down for what appears to be a very challenging year, in particular his eight rules for leaders is excellent and I wanted to share those with you today. Rule number one, leaders relentlessly upgrade their team using every encounter as an opportunity to evaluate, coach, and build self-confidence. Jack was particularly known for his controversial 70-20-10 rule, you may have heard of it, where 70% of your employees are considered the lifeblood of your organization, 20% are considered your stars, and 10%, well, they just shouldn't be at your company. Talent has always been critical to business success. If you're in the service business, it's literally all you have. So whether or not you want to be as ruthless as Jack was, although I think if you're making layoffs this year, you probably don't have a choice anyways, but make sure you aren't treating everybody the same. Remember, fair does not equal the same. Most importantly, if you take anything out of this rule, use every encounter as an opportunity to evaluate and coach your employees. I'm sure if you ask them, and if you haven't asked them in the past, please do, they'll tell you that they crave it more than anything. They want to know where they stand. So, what are you going to do in 2009 to upgrade your team? 
By the way, if I ask some questions during the, the show here, they're not rhetorical questions. I really want to know what you're going to be doing so we can all share with each other and so we can all learn from each other. Rule number two, leaders make sure people not only see the vision, that they live and breathe it. The world, as you know right now, is changing. The auto and financial sectors are in big trouble. Newspapers and mainstream media are fearing for their lives. And there's a good bet that somebody somewhere in your industry is feeling the same squeeze, maybe even you. I'm certain that your employees see this happening and are wondering what the future holds for them. So your job in 2009 is to tell them. If you don't have a vision for what the future holds, well, you better get one, and then you better speak about it every chance you get. Jack always said that when you're sick of talking about it, and when you're pretty sure your employees are sick of hearing it, you know that you're on the right track. So, what's your vision for the future, and in particular, what's your vision for 2009? Rule number three. Leaders get into everyone's skin, exuding positive energy and optimism. Jack used to walk around the halls of GE chomping on multiple pieces of gum and displaying one thing more than anything else, passion. Not that I always felt that way, of course. There are times when you feel like you've just been hit by a ton of bricks and you really don't feel like putting on the happy face. But he realized something critical. He was on a stage every day. And like it or not, his employees were watching his every move and not just listening to what he said, but also to how he said it and how he carried himself. So like it or not, your employees are watching your every move. It's easy to get fired up when things are going your way, when sales are coming in, when operations are getting everything out smoothly, but that's not always the way things are. It's not easy when you feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel, and guess what? That's not daylight coming in, that's a steaming locomotive barreling down the track. But that's when your positive energy and your optimism are needed most. That's where they separate the men from the boys. That's where they separate the leaders from the managers. Whatever cliche you want to throw at it, those are the situations where leaders are made. Rule number four. Leaders establish trust with candor, transparency, and credit. Trust is such a huge thing right now. So here are three things you need to do to get it, according to Jack. The first is candor. Jack likes to say that candor is a four-letter word in business. But he single-handedly changed the culture of GE during his time there by doing one thing, speaking his mind. The second is transparency. This is kind of an extension of candor because what do you speak your mind about? Everything. Remember, transparency and candor are not about blowing sunshine up everybody's ass either. People know when you're giving them a line of BS. So if things are going to be tough for a while, let them know. If you've got to freeze salaries for the next year, let them know. And when finally things start turning around, let them know. The third and last thing about gaining people's trust is giving credit where credit is due. I'm hoping that one doesn't need any explanation. Rule number five is leaders have the courage to make unpopular decisions and gut calls. Leadership is not a popularity contest. Maybe sometime this year you're going to have to cut back on the free coffee or maybe take a drastic measure like letting go half of your staff. But whatever it is, sometime this year you're going to have to make a decision that your staff will second guess and they might even hate you for it. But if they trust you, they'll know that it's a decision that has to be made. Jack always used data and analysis to inform his decisions, but he never had perfect information. That's where the gut call has to kick in. So when was the last time you made a decision that you knew everybody would hate and you knew that it was the right thing to do? Rule number six, leaders probe and push with a curiosity that borders on skepticism, making sure their questions are answered with action. Well, that's a mouthful. Jack used to say that he wasn't afraid of being the dumbest guy in the room. If he didn't understand something, he'd ask about it rather than trying to look like he knew everything. From what I understand, much of the current economic crisis could have been avoided if more leaders had asked the dumb questions. So. 
Don't be afraid to look stupid. It might end up saving your company one day, literally. Also, when you ask a question, make sure it's followed up by action. If they can't come back to you with a better answer, then put the kibosh on whatever it is they insist on doing because if you can't understand it, it's not worth doing. So when was the last time you acted like the dumbest guy in the room? Rule number seven, leaders inspire risk by setting the example. This one might seem a little bit odd considering the circumstances right now, but hang in here with me. Jack knew that risk was the only way to innovate and move ahead. Doing things that are surefire winners is just business as usual, and there probably aren't going to be too many surefire winners these days anyways. So while many of us are just hoping that business as usual actually happens next year, there's a giant opportunity lurking out there for the truly brave. While this crisis is happening, the business world is fundamentally changing. Consumers are becoming infinitely more powerful, and Web 2.0 is changing the way we communicate, even inside old guard companies like IBM. My point is this. You're going to have to rethink your future anyways. It's only a matter if you're going to act now or if you're going to act later. So as a leader, if you decide to act now and control your future as proactively as possible, your people are going to follow suit. So stick your head out and take a risk. Just make sure that it's one that you understand. And finally, rule number eight, leaders celebrate. Jack celebrated like it was his job, literally. He did everything from keg parties to getaways to the tropics. Again, this seems like odd advice considering there's a good chance your company holiday party was canceled or cut back this year. But celebrations don't always have to cost a lot of money or put on the big flashy show. The reason we celebrate is to let our employees know that we care about them and that we value their contributions to the company. There's something fundamentally human about this and just because things aren't going as well as you'd like them to doesn't mean that your employees still don't need to feel valued. So find smaller ways to celebrate. Maybe it's a handwritten letter to one of your staff or maybe it's a gift certificate for dinner somewhere. But there's something today worth celebrating at your business. Find it. Okay, that's all for this week. Once again, please let me know how we can improve the show for you, and we'll see you again next week. Remember, when you put a little bit of passion into your business, great things happen.